go, man. This is perfect. Coming in. Hopefully the connection will work. Bam. <laughs> what up? up? What's going on? What's man? up, dude? What hey, you man. Just hanging out. Bro, thank you. Let me turn these comments off real quick just for a little bit. Bro, I appreciate you coming. Oh, of course, dude. Of course, of course. Um, I mean, I could have a million excuses like, oh, I was running around. I was doing it. But we all know I ain't doing shit. We all know I'm sitting. <laughs> I know, dude. I know. I got I got a chair and I'm sitting in my uh, gym and I've been going crazy, man. I'm sorry. I, I, today I rode my chopper and I oh. dropped my phone and no lie, it was glitching green and I couldn't get on it. Lost all my codes. I stored my codes in my phone, and this happened twice, two times to me. So every time I call, that's a bunch of mosquitoes. Every time I call, they're like, "Verify your, verify yourself." Okay, let me call your phone. I don't have my phone. How else can you verify yourself? <laughs> Gmail. I don't have my password. So it was like, "Sorry, man." I can <laughs> yeah. First of all, I'm gonna need you to remember your email password. <laughs> I do. <now. laughs> I do now, dude. I randomly. Thought I was sitting there and I just randomly thought, super easy. And I was like, no, this can't be it. Because I change passcodes all the time. And mm -hmm. last time, I, it was just so hard. And it happened during Christmas. I had off mm -hmm. eight days of going crazy. Not traveling, not working, not filming, nothing. And it sounds cool, but when I was off my phone, I was like fiending for a phone, man. You got a phone? Bro, give me a little crack here. It was bad. It was bad. Chris well, Rock on exact city. Yeah. Where, where are you at right now? I'm uh, at home. I'm in okay. LA. I'm in okay. my house. Just I saw your left. saw your crib video. Oh yeah. <laughs> I like it, bro. It was a good setup. Yeah, I gotta come to your house, dog. Dude, dude you you uh, okay? I will send you only for you. I'm gonna send you an Instagram video of what a wreck my house is. I decided to remodel. So we have paint outside the car. I, I took the carpets up myself. We were supposed to have a, a wood floor laid. So I'd be getting antsy and dog pee <laughs> on the carpet. And I used to do carpet long, many moons ago when I was in karate school training mm -hmm. and I pulled the carpets up and here I'm doing all the workers. <laughs> almost <laughs> didn't <get> back <laughs> the kids are like, sir, I'm like, no, it's my home. Are you, yeah, it's my home, bro. I'm, my home. Like, but. I know how to do it. <laughs> anyway, so, dude, you, you have so much stuff. I was looking in the barbershop, bloodshot that just came out. But, I and mean, tons of stuff. New Girls Game Night, whatever, a ton of stuff. But I'm just going to tell you right now, dude, I appreciate you. I'm not – I don't look at resumes or stats. Mm -hmm. I just looked that you were in the bloodshot movie. Mm -hmm. And when I inbox you, I'm like, sure, God, you've done so much stuff. But you were so cool all the time to me. And I did have to ask you to make sure if you watch Power Rangers, because I don't want to be that guy. Absolutely. Are you kidding me? It, it's crazy. I think everybody in the world watches Power Rangers or has watched it. Bro, okay, so Hasbro owns it. What if, I'm just saying, what mm -hmm. if they called you and said you could be a Ranger? Which color would you be and you why? Gotta, you always got to bet on black. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, black. Um, I would either go black black or red red was my favorite color growing up yeah so i always wanted like when i was a kid i used to like if i put a red car drove by i'll go that's my car that's my car yeah. you know and i just i gravitate towards that color even though i think i've only had one red car in my life and that was my first ever car it was a ford tempo oh. and after that after that piece of shit crapped out on me I, uh, I uh this is all oh I actually take that back my mom had a red ford windstar minivan that she gave me after she was done with it so i used to drive around in the van wasn't getting no action but you know <laughs> I don't think it matters what you drive you're good now but i had a, i had a red nissan mini truck and actually my bid would you know hit a switch yeah. And that stuff, because I was saying you were in barbershop, and the NWA was huge when my brother grew up. I mean, that okay, was yeah. huge. So, you know, we got the boxes, and I, I now that I'm thinking, I've had so many cars by the time I was 18. I, I struggled, I hustled, I've always been an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. But now you said red. I had a red mini truck with a diamond back. I would just hit it, oh, you, you know, <laughs> now with the, you know, back in the days when you see, you know, spinners, and you're like, oh, that used to be cool. But, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know. I, I know you, you're, you do a lot of comedy, too, um, mm -hmm. and 
it's just funny. I, I just want to ask you: Do you do you ever? And I want to ask you, Power Ridge, but do you ever get stage fright, like or anxiety? Because I've I've experienced that over my years, and I don't know if it's just working or drinking water or traveling too much. Have you ever experienced where you're like, I'm about to go out there? Yeah, I mean, every time I go on stage, um, or you, or day one of a new project. So whenever I go on stage, I mean, it's been that way since I can remember. It's been that way since I was in, in theater school, um, my first ever plays in high school and right before. It's like weeks out that I know I have to do this thing and I get so much anxiety. I still do to this day. I had a show probably a month ago at a comedy spot here in LA called UCB. Easy show, you know, I'm just a guest performer where I come on, I hang out, have fun with the, with the crew that's already performing and you just get loose a little bit and do, do the stuff that you grew up doing and you know how to do is real easy work. But because there's a crowd, you just, there's always that level of unknown. Yeah. Are you gonna be good? Are you gonna be funny? Are you gonna be engaging enough that you won't get booed? Yeah. <laughs> and so I always have that thought. So to this day, or like day one of a project, for example, day one on Bloodshot, yeah. it was it was an unknown thing because I, I, I never met Vin. I never, or I never worked with him at least. I'd met him before, but I never worked with him, so I didn't know. And he, I'm sure he didn't remember me. Yeah, yeah. he so did. Didn't it? Didn't yeah. like he did. You know, and I, you know, and so you get those nerves. How is what's it going to be like working with somebody? What's going to be? Are we going to gel? Are we going to mesh? You get lucky because you always do. Yeah, but um, there's always that uncertainty right beforehand. Yeah, well, that's good, dude. I'm I'm glad you say that because I'm no matter what, even with Power Rangers, and we'll talk about colors, but even with Power Rangers, it was. It, it, it's still, but you, you know, fighting, yeah. skydiving. I got fourteen hundred jumps every time I skydive. I do, yeah. I mean, I you know, jumped helicopters, balloons, bridges, what? base jump. Yeah, I know. I was gonna ask you if you ever skydived. No, dude. <laughs> no, that's not gonna happen. That's not happening ever. Uh, it's funny, dude. I got I got a friend in in uh, Jordan, and I'm saying, you want to skydive? He's like, no, man. He's like, all you crazy white people skydive. He's like, we're not skydiving. And I was like, every friend I have is like, it's either they like it or they don't. But yeah, um, that's what it is. <laughs> I, I, I get like that, but I think it saves you. I think it, it when you don't care, like a lot of friends I've lost skydiving a lot. They just get, mm, I'm comfortable now. I, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not a little pressure to work competing, for example, when mm -hmm. I bought, you know, I would, I would compete. I would get so stressed out, mental, mentally dumped, and then on the end it would be like the main event. So I'm sitting there, and I was going to ask you, this is another one, in between sets or in between what you're doing, not on a film or TV, mm -hmm. but in between stuff like me, I would I would be the main event and stressed out and, and seeing people leave and gurneys or whatever, broken arms, and I had to mentally save myself for like 11 o'clock. Does that happen when you're like at a comedy show? Like you're it's five o'clock you're pumped up and then you have to wait a couple hours or vice versa you mean like the the, the waiting, waiting yeah period? like hey you're going on at nine and you get there at like five or six and you're just waiting what do you do during that process i mean you're not practicing jokes i mean you could be you know i never did stand up in a uh that continuously to ever get those feelings there would be like these one-off shows and stuff like that where the schedule is usually pretty tight yeah but um, but the times that I have gone through that, you just chill, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. I know the cool thing about comedy is honestly, dude, it's, you got to drink. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got to drink. Yeah, yeah. Like, when you're about to go, to yeah, dude, take it, get, get some whiskey, just sip on that a little bit, liquid yeah. courage, you know, and by the time you get on stage, you're so warm. You're so, you, you, you know, as a performer, what it's about is about staying warm and you know staying loose just like even when you're even when you're acting or even when you're fighting you're you gotta stay warm and stay loose so when you're about to go on on stage with in, in you know in a room full of people even if you're not up there yet have fun be backstage joking around with people yeah. stay loose right. stay charismatic keep that energy up because if you lose it and then you get on stage you gotta now you're bringing it back up and finding it with the crowd yeah, as opposed to already coming out and having it. Yeah, for sure. You know well, what I, I mean? We could see that. 
look how I mean, it's like I didn't talk on FaceTime. Like, you know, I mean, I, I know you. I just never – it's just you could tell the, that the, the warm person, the entertainment without coming in front of a camera and being camera shy. I mean, that's fine for me. Right. But it is yeah. – you know, it was anxiety for me was more Wi-Fi. That's why I kept going back and forth. I um, yeah. take that stuff really hard if, it, if I can't bring someone in and I'm, oh, my God, Wi-Fi. Oh, you get the, yeah, is it going to you know, has the whole process going to work? Yeah, yeah. hard on myself, man. Yeah. So when I was the Green Ranger, man, I went to set. I got casted. I casted actually with the Yellow Ranger, although the Green Ranger didn't appear till later. So I'm in yeah. my position, uh, and I have the Yellow Ranger, like 10 girls and one guy. So when I'm auditioning, I'm thinking – is this for a guy role or a girl role? Because I'm about to take these women out to get this role. <laughs> so, it was a guy and a girl, so I auditioned, killed it. Uh, they didn't tell me I was hired, and they said, hey, Jason, go out there and pick a girl and, and show them some karate because I trained my whole life. So mm -hmm. I randomly said, hey, you, we, and I taught her this routine. So when she went in, me and her got hired at the same time, although she was oh, wow. last-minute replacement because the other Yellow Ranger quit. Mm -hmm. So I had to wait 15 episodes to get going but i would go in my room i'd see this power ranger suit first thing i thought about was oh god it's green because back then green wasn't that popular of a color you know i told right. you one there wasn't rick ross singing green gucci suit there yeah. wasn't like <laughs> green cars unless you went way down in los angeles there wasn't green shoes there was nothing so i had to embrace it and go okay cool see i was the red in later seasons but Kids were familiar with colors. That's why yeah. you're like, hey, you know, red, blue, green. So I embraced the green. Yeah. And here we are. It worked, it worked out. So many <laughs> years later, dude, I was hired for 10 episodes, 10 to 15. And then we ran out of footage, Japanese footage, because it was cut together. You know, oh, they wow. bought the footage. They pre-cut it together more than time. And then, but they, Green Ranger didn't have that much footage on me. So I had to film a lot. Um, but once that ran out, they ran out of footage and then they went, Okay, well, what are we going to do now? So they went to the next season and got the White Ranger footage. So then I turned to the White Ranger. So it's like having material. Oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah, running out of Japanese uh, footage. So when you think about cutting stuff together, you're like, half the show is already done. And then we just insert, insert you, insert Vin Diesel, insert people, and make a whole mm -hmm. project out of it, which it was, you know, campy and, and stuff. So right. it worked. I'm not, I, I'm, 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 I'm obviously playing it cool, but like, dude, like, <laughs> You like that was that was my shit. <laughs> you went, I was like involved in the storylines. I was like, yo, wait, he's the White Ranger. Wait, what's going on? You know, as a kid, you're sitting there like, yeah, you're. Yeah. It's not. It's not make believe when you're a kid. Right. You're there, and that forms, you know, a, a part of the way you think, and it molds your mind a little bit when you grow old. When you grow older. And when you see this, even when they do the reboots and stuff like that, you're still like, let me check this out. Yeah. This is yeah. the same as when I was growing up, because when I was growing up, that was the best one. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so it's, it's just so dope to, to, to talk to you, bro. Dude, it's crazy, man. I appreciate you. I, I know I'm getting older and when I have all these athletes, like professional fighters, like Max Holloway and uh, mm -hmm. Ted King and all these people around your age that just totally grew up, you know, watching me. And it's, it's an honor to actually – still i guess be here and inspire people and when this whole this show show thing i'm just trying to stay busy man i'm trying to stay yeah. mentally sharp i'm trying to entertain my fans mm -hmm. firing them, trying to add value to a show and and when i saw you man i was like super cool i you know the, the standard questions I, I know you just did the bloodshot you I, I think uh you guys filmed where south africa yeah we filmed cape town uh cape town south africa we we shot a little bit in, in montreal some in London. Yeah, we kind of moved around a little bit, yeah. It's crazy. It just came out, this whole virus thing hit. But it, it, I think right now it's entertaining people at home, dude. There's, like, not a lot of movies to choose from. You got – I myself wanted to see Bloodshot. I was excited for it, man. I wanted to – Yeah, of course. Mirror. You played, I right? Yeah, I yeah. did it on the – on a TV show and, and uh, with Bat in the Sun. But what's interesting about that is they did the superpower beat, the Green Ranger versus Ryu, White Ranger, mm -hmm. Scorpion. I didn't know Bloodshot at that time. I was deep in Comic Cons. I just didn't know Bloodshot. And then uh, when I got the role, I gained like 20 pounds in the role. And I was going to ask you about getting fit, though, but I had gained 20 pounds, and it wasn't easy. It's, it was harder for me to keep weight on. So we filmed it, believe right. it or not, sporadically within two years. We only did like 
15 days, but it was shot within a two month period. So oh, wow. I had to stay consistent. Like, hey, uh, Lamorne, we'll see you uh, six months looking the same. <laughs> so, you know, was, uh, so, yeah, I played it. I enjoyed your movie. I enjoyed watching you. I, I instantly thought of acting and accent. You do it so amazing. Every character that I watch is unique. It's not you. How how did you how did you pick up? I mean, you obviously. I'm saying, do you do different accents or? Well, I do. I do different accents. I, I but I've never been able to, or have never been asked to use them uh -huh. professionally. You yeah. know, as an actor, you know, you train and you. You can take a dialect course if you want. You can take these things if you want. And when I was coming up, I used to. So I, I would goof around with, you know, impressions of people, um, you know, accents, stuff like that. I would, you know, a lot of my friends are from Australia. So I would mimic their voice and they would teach, oh, don't say it like that. You got to say it like this. And hello, you know, and all that stuff. And, and you're, you're just, as a performer, when you're not working, sometimes I talk to myself. I'll be sitting here at home and my, watch a TV and I'll just be mimicking the people that I see on TV and I watch a lot of British TV. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I think their, their dramas are the dopest, you know what I mean? So I'm always like engaged in the stuff that they do. And then when this opportunity came about, it was originally Russian. Mm -hmm. And that was something I had never done before. Yeah, and it was a quick turnaround. I booked the role and then we had, I was in Cape town uh, a week and a half later. So I was like, if that, you know, so then, so therefore I was like, man, like, I got to really nail this. I got to really focus on this. So it's not going to be Russian. So yeah, casting yeah. director was like, you know, try Australian, try, you know, British. So I did both. Um, and we went with British. Yeah. I thought you did. Yeah. Man, like all, all the barbershop. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, uh, the scene, I I, because with kids, I don't want to be like, high five, high five, yeah. what size they were, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so you got in shape, right? I see your pictures. Uh, you, I mean, you, I would say, I, I talked to a lot. I got nervous and happy. What makes you, I guess, not motivated? How can you tell people, like, how you got motivated? Like, oh, I'm trying to do a movie, or was it like? Well, it was a couple of things. One, I have a, a good friend of mine, a writing partner of mine, this guy Kyle Chevron. He um, he was really skinny, and I was my my stomach was like big, right? And we both didn't work out. We would play basketball every once in a while and hung out every day, but like we never worked out. And then one day, his little brother started training out of nowhere. Just started training, and him and his little brother are super competitive. So then he started training. And the problem is, is that now that he started training, he started body shaming me. <laughs> I mean, every day, it's like, oh, what are you doing? What are you eating? Well, you know, he would see photos of me from like a red carpet and like text it to me with circle with a circle around my belly. <laughs> and then, yeah, well, that's having a friend like that. It works. It works. They, they, they you say you, you are working out with yeah. exactly. You know, exactly. If all your friends are training, if all your friends are working out, you're going to be like, okay, well, you know what? I'm not going to be at home all the damn time. Let me come to the gym too. Or let me go to the park or let me go play ball or box or, you know, do these things. And then I just kind of got addicted to it because I started seeing the results. Yes. You know, I started seeing the results and I knew I was about to do bloodshot. So I, I stayed in that mode because, and I knew my character wasn't going to necessarily have those shirtless moments like that. Yeah. But I did know that we had, you know, there was the potential of other movies. Yeah. yeah. And so what I wanted to do was already get in shape. Yeah. For when, if they greenlit a second one. Yeah. And then, you know, speaking with the director, there's potential that my character would be more of a superhero in the physical sense than just behind a computer. Yeah. That's crazy. I know I talked to David before. David, his first time big picture directing stuff. I, I yeah. thought it looked good. Well, I mean, it, was, it, was it different than, I mean, movies, television and movies, you have different setups. You have yeah. burning through pages. We burn about 10 pages a day on Power Rangers, literally. Wow. Like 60 to 100 set, uh, uh, setups for action. It was like, bam, bam, bam. So yeah. when it came to the movie, obviously, when we did Power Ranger movie, it was like a page a day maybe two pages a day. 
Yeah. Was it interesting? Did he feel like just fit in? I mean, Dave's uh, not that he probably watches this, but was it good? I mean, do you feel? I didn't even. I didn't even know he was a first. Like I knew he was a first time director, but I didn't know because it it just yeah. didn't make sense. Yeah. You I know he's that. he's really good. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's good. It's good to see that. Yeah. Dinesh is a, is a great guy. I yeah. A lot of time. Awesome. <laughs> But it, I, I think I, I kind of sought you out a little bit because I know who you are. And when I used to kind of strategically go like, oh, I wonder who's in it. It was such a, you know, Dinesh mm -hmm. was so, you know, it's of course, NBA, everybody was so, you know, uh, you know, quiet about it. So I'd see the tags and I saw you were in it. And then I started, oh, man, it's so cool, yeah. you know, to see this <laughs> come alive. And it's out now. I think it's, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it's, in, it's in your home. I think it's a some people look at it as bad some people look at it as good mm -hmm. i look at it as it's all meant to be man like you know yeah. and everything's meant to be um but yeah that's great man so what would you tell people to get what would you tell in a few words uh for people that want to get in shape well you have to lower your caloric intake i will say that <laughs> always yeah. that to me i started training and i was like i was for the first month i mean my the weight i was pushing was like getting heavier and heavier and heavier but I still look the same. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't taking the diet seriously. You know, you work out, you get hungry. So I would go eat the same stuff I was eating before. Yeah. You know, then, then my trainer strategically, this guy, Eddie Baruta, he's over at Up Fitness, um, Ultimate Performance Fitness in, in LA. He is a genius. Like he just, he just, he, he let me go and let me do what I was going to do. Yeah. And was like, and then finally was like, all right, now, you should start paying attention to your diet now. This is what we're going to do. We're going to track this. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And the key behind it was being in the caloric deficit. Mm -hmm. So as opposed to taking in 3,000 calories a day or, or, or 2,000 or 2,500, whatever you're used to, take down lower, you know, take in lower. So I would eat, you know, it was almost like I was eating the same meals. I was just minding how much sauce I would put on certain things. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, before I had a habit of before I go to bed, I would snack on something. Yeah. So I just made sure I just didn't do that. You know, I would, I would, you know, cut out certain things. So essentially I was taking in 1600 to 1700 calories yeah. a day. And then before you know it, every week you're dropping a pound yeah. or more. Yeah. And you're like, man, I'm dropping half a pound a day type of type of stuff, you know, and, and especially when you're working out. And then also I would say on days when you don't work out, certain days you just feel tired, you're just sluggish, especially if you're not in the habit of working out all the time, do something. Yeah. You know, just don't be still, you know, yeah. try to get 10,000 steps a day. It seems like a lot. It's really not. But just have your phone in your pocket. Take a walk, right. you know, a light jog. Just move around. If you're at home, if you go to the bathroom, I have a buddy who whenever he goes to the bathroom, when he walks in, he'll do five pull-ups. <laughs> so every time he has to go, he'll do five pull-ups. Yeah, every time. And, and, and this guy is ripped. This guy is. I mean, sorry, somebody called me. Uh, yeah. that, was the, that was the president. He needed a serious <laughs> favor. Uh, Dude, I'm going to send you this. I'm going to send you this voice text, the robo calls, you know, where they block calls. Yeah. You this, what it's like the president. You're like, hello. <laughs> it's like, hi, I'm Jason Frank. Who is this? And it goes into the <laughs> for the whole minute. I'm the president of the United States. I'm gonna send it to you. It's so funny, but but go ahead. So you do. <laughs> yeah, you look great me. though, dude. Like to post to post your picture, man. It very very motivating for people, and it's um, you know, I think people can be themselves. Like I always used to train people. I think the biggest uh struggle for everyone, including myself, is the mental exercise right now. Is that mentality? That mental. It's physical too, but yeah. physical releases endorphins. But I just think that it's great that you can sit there and post and say, hey, you know, I struggled. I watched what I ate. 80% is probably diet. Fighting is 80% in your head. 80. Yeah. And I, I get the cardio, but it's really skydiving all in my head. I can either, or I could like, it's 80%. So it's good to see someone, like I have wrestlers on here. I had Zach Ryder, and he was, you know, he just talked, we just talked about cats and working out, but he said he like doing it all the time, it's people see him, 
he's doing WWE and training, but he says he has to, like you, don't just be still and keep yeah. it, you know? So um, <clears throat> what is up for you, Lamar? And what's next on your what's on next? schedule? Yeah. This, this is a picture of toast and butter. <laughs> it's from, it's from a new show. For real? Coming out uh, called Woke on Hulu. Okay. Wow. So, yeah, it's based on a, it's based on a, a, I play the main character. It's based on a guy named Keith Knight, who's a cartoonist. And one day he has this run in with the police where, now let's, let's backtrack a second. This guy is the nicest, most sweet, sweetheart type of a guy. Politically, he walks the line in the middle. So he doesn't look left, doesn't look right. He's just like, yeah, we're all the same, right? You know, it's fine. Until one day something happens to him and his eyes become open and, you know, he becomes essentially woke. Oh. But in that state of being woke, he's, he starts seeing things. So these cartoon characters start coming to life to him and forming his opinion where you're wearing a jacket and all of a sudden your jacket starts talking to me, like, get me off of this dude. Like this dude does this to me. He abuses <laughs> yeah, me, he throws me on the floor. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? So my character is, he's literally going crazy during this time in his life, but also at the same time, he might be becoming an extremist, you know? Um, and so we've got Blake Anderson from Workaholics on the show. We got Rose MacGyver from iZombie. We got um, uh, T. Murph, dope comedian. Uh, we've got Cedric the Entertainer as a voiceover, Sam Richardson. We got uh, Tony Hale from V. We got Cat Williams plays my racist marker. Oh, you know, right, we got, a, it's like a dope cast. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's the next project. I got a movie called Desperados coming out on Netflix with uh, Nassim Pedrad, um, Anna Camp. It's going to be, you know, dope, Damn. dope project. Um, it's, yeah, it's man. So amazing, man. It's so it's such an honor, dude. I don't care about all the, the the stuff we do. It's such an honor to meet someone that is in this position that's humbling and cool. You know what I mean? And and, and approachable <laughs> to people and open. Dude, I, honestly, I tell people that you have no clue. If there's anything you ever want, Power Ranger related, dude, I got you. But there's, I tell all my <laughs> friends that they deposit in, in my emotional bank account. And I'm like mm -hmm. a real loyal guy and I'll never forget. And mm -hmm. I appreciate you doing that and taking the time, man. I know you're busy. And we're of course, man. Talking your, your Bloodshot movie and everything that you, you got coming out, which is amazing. You're motivating people. I might get pumped up if I do like pull ups. Like my heart rate might. I have to yeah. even as it is though. I, I, well, I, well, if it's not pull ups, something five do a couple abs, a couple crunches. It's morphin time. You can do that. <laughs> that's that's working. That's working back muscles. That's working that's the triceps. Right. I can do that's that many times. That. You know how many times I've done that, man? Like I, I've just oh my god. <laughs> it is funny with the morph sequences, and then I'll let you go. But the morph sequences for us as an actor was easy. It was like. Morphin time, put your hand behind your back. Each season got more complex and more complex. Yeah. Morphin time, you know, where it's like, <laughs> it, I see a couple of things on Instagram, monsters are like, are you ready to talk? You know what I mean? So, They've been morphing for a long time now. <laughs> yeah, dude. But like the, the old school morph is the easiest. People ask me all the time, what's your favorite morph? It's like, morphin time, put your hand behind your back, cut to the next shot. Then it became like really. Yeah, intricate. <laughs> it's like remember, it's like when basketball players do the handshake before they go to the bench. Yeah, it's like yeah. A long, elaborate thing. Gotta touch yeah. a patch, brush your teeth. You gotta do all that. Yeah, exactly, man. I I, did, I do have one thing. Uh, yes. Your 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 favorite favorite uh, team is the Lakers. Who's your favorite team? The Bulls. Their team is the Bulls. Okay. But but I'm rooting for the Lakers. I'm a huge LeBron fan. Okay. I mean, it's it's LeBron all day, and I mean, I'm literally wearing his shoes as we speak. Like, oh yeah, nice. Man. You know what I mean? I yeah. I'm obsessed. It's like a I'm a huge basketball fan, but look, I'm a LeBron guy, so That's I'm rooting for the Lakers right now. Look, I got to show you. It's a perception that I have, but look, it's I'm just. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I'm just <kidding. laughs> got my shirt, got my slides. I was riding my chopper today in my slides. I was uh, shooting. You were on the chopper practice. with the slides. Yeah, dude. I wish my phone. That's what I'm saying. I dropped my phone and it started glitching all green. Like, and I'm like, of all colors, dude, like glitching green. I was going to do my, you know, chopper. <laughs> like, oh, I'm sliding up, but. Where are you? Where, where, where are you at? What, what, what country, what city, state? 
Houston. You're in Houston? Houston, yeah. I'd live in nice. Valencia. That's right. Yes, we talked about that. Fontana, Ontario, mm -hmm. Covina, Azusa. Those are all my areas where I grew up, man. And uh, okay. yeah, it's amazing. You said sugar. What's your favorite candy? Literally eating them right now. Jelly beans. Starburst jelly beans. I love. Love Skittles. Actually, I love the Jelly Belly jelly beans, too. Although yeah. sometimes I'll get like a weird flavor, like licorice or coffee. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, you know, Skittles, man, you can't go wrong with Skittles. What about that bamboozle game? Have you ever done that? Like, I want to pull all the good ones, you know, where you eat the jelly beans, nasty milk, fish, whatever you spin mm -hmm. it. And then it'll come up and it's blue and it's either you could pick one, either blueberry or toothpaste, which is not, uh -huh. not that bad. But I wish I could just take all the good ones out and just be like, hey, bro. Why don't you spend oh, some eat, eat ass flavored <laughs> jelly beans? But you want to eat some ass? You want to eat some ass, man? Here you go. Eat some ass. <laughs> oh, I am gonna bug you though. Yeah, dude. So I got the show coming out. Woke, where I play a cartoonist and a comic book artist. You know, I'm in Bloodshot. I need to. I need to. I need to come hang out with you at some of these cons, dude. Dude. Anytime. People would love to have you there. I think sometimes promoters, they feel maybe they don't know. There's, they're not approachable. Some actors don't want to do it. I mean, there's, there's big actors. These comic cons are not what people think anymore. Do people would mm -hmm. love you over there? But like mm -hmm. I do it. Like I am deep in that game because from day one, I believed in it. I've always, you know, I'll tell people, Hey man, just let me show up and hang out. Then it's turned into a huge, incredible crowd. I mm -hmm. really do stuff for passion, man. Like, yeah, honestly, Power Rangers wasn't that thing where it was like, well, here's all your money and do Power Rangers. It was like, hold on, man, I'll do this for free in front of the lights. I get to be a superhero, but dude, you can come anytime, anytime yeah. with me, man. I know you're super busy. You got a lot going on, but dude, I think the best thing for me tonight was actually getting that time to talk to you. And I, I really do feel like I turned off comments. I, I don't, I would be the same with you on the phone. I'm not going to mm -hmm. change or be different and be like, hey, this is what we're mm -hmm. selling today because you're taking your time out of the day. I am, and we're entertaining people and motivating people. I think the big thing here for the learning curve for me and, and for value yeah. is number one, actors are humble. Number two, you train and work out just like everyone else. You love Power Rangers, but you mm -hmm. love your job, and you're such a, a a chameleon in your roles, dude. That's, like, rare to see, like, just different things in your acting. And I give you much respect for that, dude. I would love to hang out anytime with you, dude. Anytime to bring you to a show. And fans would absolutely love it, man. Because I talked to Dinesh, and he just he, – he, he says he's going to do it. He – He's not. I'm gonna. I'm gonna call on you, dude. I'm gonna hang out with you. Dinesh is like. Okay. I, I know every promoter, and and see the the difference with these guys is that it's like you knowing producers, directors, and actors. This is a whole different world. I mean, I got like the yeah. big agency who represents stuff, but I usually do my own stuff. And I, I'm like you, like, hey, I want to go. You can go anytime. All these, yeah. the producer are friends of mine. Everyone, and they'd be like, what? Sometimes people don't come off approachable or they'll ask and they'll be like, nah, I, I don't want to do it. I mean, dude, if you got time, it would be like, it would mean so much to the fans. It, it would just, to see someone new out there on the circuit would be really amazing. I see, I work with a lot of big people, big actors, new actors. It's mm -hmm. not like where you go to a Star Trek convention and see yeah. that. Work. This stuff is different. Yeah. John, John Berthenol, all these guys that are Bruce Campbell, these guys are all my friends that I've met just like you. I don't, mm -hmm. you know, I, 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 you respect the professionalism. You love the fans. You would be great at it, man. You'd be super good. Oh, yeah. Dude, I went, I went once just, I went to Comic-Con once. Um, at the time, I was dating someone who was interviewing people. Yeah. So I went, was, I went as her plus one. Yeah. And, and the main floor area, I was like, oh, I'll just go walk through there. And it was a zoo. Like, it was crazy. I was, like, in a corner taking photos and I was like, man, how come we've how come we've never done a, a Comic Con or a convention or a, yeah. anything like for for even for New Girl? Like I was so confused by that because everybody loves the show, and I yeah, just thought, yeah. damn, we are missing out on so so many like newer fans, yeah, um, yeah. more eyeballs for our show, and um, it was just great. So ever since then, I was like, man, I gotta go. I want to go. I want to be like invited there. I want to have a Bro, room. Yeah. <laughs> they would love to invite you. Just I think in this world, so, like big. Big, you know, actors and celebrities—they—they they don't want to feel rejected. That's the truth. I, I, 
I look at you. You know how many people I would never ask. Hey, you want to come to a Comic Con? Since you asked, I can get you in any show, not as a favor, not as yeah. a you up. No, it would be like, oh wow, that's, I'm honored. That's how it would be. So if you ever want to, all it's not about hooking you up. Let me hook you up. It's about those guys want it. Really? He wants to? Oh, yeah, amazing. So, oh, anytime. that's good. That stuff's fun, yeah, man. Anytime. I did that with the shop. We gave out free comic books to Valiant. I struggled to build the brand because not a lot of people know the Bloodshot. Even at Comic Con, I was like, hey, I'm Bloodshot. And they're like, yeah, cool. Sign the Morpher type of thing. And, yeah. Uh, so it was New York Comic Con. I have a huge following at Comic Con. And if you give away a comic book that's free, no matter what brand, people are going to get it. Because sometimes at Comic Con, nobody gives anything away. And so I was wow. there. Yeah, I was there. Valiant did the, of course, you guys have the fans. You know, and, and, and you can always drive the fans. But, dude, interacting with the fans is more eyeball, more passion, more social media, and it just shows the humbleness of the person. It, right. it really does, man. And, I, and I've worked with a lot of people. I'd love to, love to work with you. All right, one more question before I, before I let you go. If, if you built your N, NBA street team, they said, hey, Morm, we, we need you to build a team. And we're going to have your team go against a, 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 not a professional team, but the people that are in, like, New York that are good, like play ball in the Bronx, all those people that are just super good but maybe never get a chance to go to the NBA. Who would you pick on your team? Well, I mean. Let's just not the whole team. Let's say, uh, if you could, your dream team, five players. Five. My dream team, it would, it would, we would start with LeBron. Yeah, yeah. Start there. Now we're talking older players. Yeah. Just oh, you, just you know, all mixed. You got like one shot to recruit anyone you want, even if they're not here. They're anyone you want. If I had to recruit, recruit karate, I would recruit Bruce Lee. Chuck Norris is a friend of mine. He does the shows too. But let's build a little dream team. Oh, dude, LeBron, Michael Jordan. Uh, I would have Steph Curry, just based off the fact that he can shoot from anywhere. Uh, I would have, so we got LeBron, we got, we got LeBron, Michael Jordan, that's pretty much all you need, Steph Curry. I would, put Sha I would put Shaq in there just because old school Shaq, like the most dominant player in my opinion. And then I have to do it. I got to put Jesus in there because no one's going to want to dunk on Jesus. <laughs> they don't want to ask him so many questions and help me, help me. They, they're going to want to do, for, they're gonna, nobody's going to want to cross over Jesus. Can you imagine breaking yeah, Jesus' yeah. ankles? Nobody's going to do that. So. That's, that's a good team, man. That's a good that's team. team right there, man. Uh, well, I know you. I know you enjoy the, the NBA candy. If if, uh, if people want to follow you, it's just it's Lamorne Moore. It's your name. Yeah, it's just my name. On Instagram, it's just Lamorne. Yeah. You're on IG, obviously, you can, they can see it. L a m o r n e. On Twitter, it's L, it's Lamorne Morris. Um, yeah, I'm around, man. I'm around. Well, uh, I'm going to send you a I don't have I um, I don't have my phone, but I'm about to inbox. The only source of communication I have now is Instagram, unfortunately. So everyone watching, if you're blowing up my phone, I am still here. <laughs> Nothing I'm sure everyone's blown up my phone, my dad and everybody. But uh, anyway, dude, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And if there's anything, yeah, thank you. anything just let me know, dude. And I oh, really sure. appreciate you taking the time. And everybody out there, if you have not watched Bloodshot, you need to rent it on the movie right now. Bloodshot's amazing. Vin Diesel and a bunch of other. There we are. Yes. And, bro, you did such a good job in it. And I believe the world will get you as a superhero. Oh, I man. Believe you keep training and, and inspiring Woo. and doing your movies, man. I can't wait to visit you. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that. Hopefully, we make it happen. Well, we got to do For one sure, together. Man. So. Yeah, dude. Man, I would love to, man. You're, you're just <laughs> a blessing to know you, man. I oh, man. Really you, as well. you, as, you as well, dude. It's truly an honor, man. Um, and uh, yes, we'll DM after this. Yeah, for sure. All right, man. Thank you, man. Take it easy. I appreciate you, buddy. Man, that was a special guest. Warren Morris, who just visited me. Uh, thank you, dude. Thank you so much. I, I just was so worried about scheduling it because of the Wi-Fi and Man, it was a it was a packed day today. Uh, Jason Font, Lamorne Morris, from the financial advisor to the to the Red Ranger to uh, the new Bloodshot movie, Barbershop, New Girls. 
you know, game night. I mean, I, a lot of things, a lot of things, dude. Thank you so much, guys. I always tell everyone I always end it here. Uh, 86,400 seconds a day, and I'm truly blessed that you allowed me in your life tonight. Everyone stay safe, and I will see you tomorrow on the show. Uh, and uh, I will announce who is. We have Rob Pryor, Rob Liefeld, the creator of Deadpool, that's uh, coming on the show. Cable, X-Force, Kevin Sorbo, uh, gosh, young David from uh, uh, Bruce Wayne from Gotham. I'm just reading the list here to... to to D1, uh, a, a rapper out there in New Orleans. Uh, God, so many. All right, guys, bless you. Thank you so much. I will see you guys tomorrow.